Okay, thank you, Valerie. Um, hi, everyone. This is um, Debbie West, and I am the current chair of the affiliate uh, Network Professional Council of TESOL International, and I am coming to you from TESOL France. And we are very pleased of the ANPC to present this webinar, the first of a series that we are starting entitled Mobile Devices and Hands-On uh, Language Learning. And our speaker today will be Shelley sanchez Terrell, who is with us from Texas. And she is a very um, innovative um, educator among us. She has, has um, several awards. She's um, present in a lot of places. Right now, I think she's teaching about 400 children. She's trained teachers and taught English language learners in over 20 countries. She um, has, is the founder of various online conferences and MOOCs. She was named Woman of the Year uh, by the National Association of Professional Women, awarded a BAMI as the founder of EdChat, and has received two ELT nominations by the British Council. So she regularly shares on Twitter and Facebook and other means, and I would like to uh, welcome Shelley to our first uh, webinar with you. And just to remind everyone that uh, questions can be put into the chat and will be uh, responded to at the end. So over to you, Shelley. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited um, to have so many people from around the world. I'm coming to you from Houston, Texas, and uh, I'd like to thank um, those who invited me and Debbie for that wonderful introduction. Um, it's really wonderful because I actually um, was able to meet her um, in T at TESOL France. I've been to the TESOL France conference and many other different TESOL conferences. Um, I'm going to go through this, but I want you to know that I know um, I will be addressing in, in you know, with uh, previous questions as well, um, the concerns about um, not having enough um, access to resources and, and how to go through that. Uh, one of the most recent places that I was able to um, help people as a ambassador for the US, a specialist for the US Embassy uh, was in Venezuela and throughout the uh, country we used a lot of mobile learning um, and some days you know we didn't have tech um, um, we didn't have electricity and we had very limited resources so I will be definitely addressing uh, those concerns. I really want to start by having this um, quote because I think it's really important. We might wonder, you know, why introduce technology or use mobile devices in the classroom. And one of the reasons why we do this is because um, it's very important and part of the lives of our young learners and our adult learners and also our teen learners, all learners. Um, it's the way that we um, we kind of, you know, have it throughout the day and you often hear where people can't even go a day without a mobile device. But it also, not to just focus on, the, you know, what how it's transformed our lives, but I really like that David Crystal really points out, you know, the opportunities and, and I want to focus on that because with the mobile device it, um, people are able to read and write, um, learn, search, and really be able to do things they never did in the past because they have this access and they can carry it around their pockets. And a lot of times they can even use it while they're, you know, waiting for transportation or they're, um, you know, on the bus or subway or they're at, they're do, standing in line somewhere or um, just throughout their days. And so if we can take the opportunity um, that or, or capitalize on that time spent and 
I teach over 440 students right now as a computer and technology teacher for um, for an elementary school. And my young learners um, are always on their device, even as young as uh, kindergarten. Some of them have their um, a mobile at the age of eight uh, with some of the parents um, or they access their parents' device as well. And so if we can get them to do something rather than just games, because that's what a lot are doing, um, or even focus on, you know, English games or ways they can in improve the four skills, then that would really, really benefit them greatly. So the key takeaways in this session are ideas for enhancing the four skills, which is speaking, reading, listening, and writing. Also, ways to use this offline. So um, that's really wonderful about a mobile device. There are so many ways that you can use it without an internet connection. You don't necessarily need an internet connection. And there have been times when presenting something has gone wrong. I was at a um, conference in Turkey and I had to present and uh, our projector didn't work. And so we had everyone take out their mobile devices and we did the whole entire session with mobile learning. And so there are definitely those opportunities where um, even if you don't have, um, if something goes wrong, a mobile device can stand in and you don't have to have the internet connection for it to be powerful learning. Also ways to promote active learning. And that's really wonderful about a mobile device is that um, you're able to get students to move around. And we've often heard of pedagogy, the um, TPR, um, where, you know, total physical response. So having that movement in addition to the language really helps um, solidify that, that language learning and help students remember. And then also ways to manage a classroom full of devices. And that's definitely an issue that comes up. And it's something that at the first couple of times uh, you may have trouble. And it's one of those um, where you have to be consistent and, and keep at it. And then um, it's going to get much, much better. And, and it's going to end up where it's really incredible learning. And you're going to just get so excited by the students' responses. So um, first, we're going to start with a little bit of an introduction in case you're unfamiliar with mobile learning. Um, then how to keep students focused, because that's extremely important. And then we'll get to I'm only going to focus on a couple of activities, and you can always visit my blog or you can visit my um, website, and you will find tons and tons more because I've written hundreds of blog posts about this and share resources all the time. Um, so we'll do icebreakers, photo challenges, video, and audio. Let's begin with thinking about access. And what I want you to do right now is to think of the types of mobile devices you and your learners already have access to. And when we think about mobile learning, mobile learning doesn't mean just a smartphone or an iPad or a very expensive smart device. A lot of times um, your students or parents might have flip cameras or they may have digital cameras or they may have um, an iPod, or they may have, um, you know, an inexpensive tablet or a Game Boy. And when they have these types of small devices, um, or even a Chromebook in, in some ways as well, um, you know, but when they have a small device and they're able to carry it around and they're able to take pictures and they're able to record video or audio, that brings a lot of learning opportunity into the classroom. Very simple ideas such as record your interview, you know, just adding it as a recording device throughout their learning. And that way they get to take it home and they get to uh, be able to learn with it. I was actually teaching. Um, so I got one of my certifications, my CELTA in Greece. And while I was in um, at Athens, Greece, um, I was teaching refugees. And even though they didn't have um, homes and and they came into the classroom with the same clothes they had cell phones not not you know smartphones but cell phones a lot look like this 
And what we would do is have them, um, th that would be a way for them to type in the vocabulary. Um, and that way they could take it with them and, and they could, um, if they had recording, they could record conversations and then they could practice um, wherever they were at. And so that was a way for them to take it home and carry it in their pocket. And um, since they always have a mobile device, you know, with paper and pen that you don't necessarily always have those um, notebook or if it rains or anything like that. But with a mobile device, it's a lot easier to store all of that information. The other great thing about mobile learning is that introducing mobile devices into the classroom, that's where you have a lot of training. So unlike an interactive whiteboard or some of the other technologies, I want you to know that you know a lot. So yes, our students know tons and tons and tons, and they help a lot. Um, and they can help us too. A lot of ways that I've learned how to use a mobile device and gotten ideas is actually from students. They'll do something and I'll think, hey, that makes a really great way to uh, learn. I'm going to incorporate that in a lesson or I'm going to use that. And so I often get ideas from students. But you've had tons of training. I mean, when you think about it, think about how many hours you spend personally with your mobile device and your either texting or your and you're writing with it or you're searching so you're looking up the information uh, some of you may be very advanced and know how to use Google Maps or some of you may be very advanced to know how to record a video and edit it or you may be very advanced um, and you know how to even draw on your own pictures or add notes and so uh, or use virtual reality or augmented reality and all of those skills that you feel comfortable with um, and even those that you don't, um, there's still time to to use your mobile device and kind of challenge yourself and think, OK, I would like to be able to, you know, use this, um, get my students to draw on pictures or something like that when you think about, you know, what they have access to or use the maps, you know, and then practice because we have our mobile devices with us all the time as well. So that's a great way for you um, to train yourself as well. And then you, you can feel more confident using it in the classroom. But there's so much that you already know. So start with what you know and you feel comfortable with. A lot of times I start by taking photos. And so in this session, even though there's thousands of activities you can do with the mobile device, we're going to take a look at taking photos, making videos, and recording audio because those tend to be the more simpler tasks and those tend to be the more engaging for students as well. But when we talk about engaging um, students and keeping them on task, you know, management with a mobile device, it depends on how your students are with you. If you've already developed that relationship, if you've already have classroom procedures in place, this is going to be a lot a more, this is going to be more simple for you or much more simpler. But um, I would really encourage you um, to if you're nervous about this to introduce it slowly so you can have something like mobile monday and we can let the students know um right away you know what are our expectations procedures and that's going to come up in a little bit um but if you are planning to do this then what i would encourage you to do is if you don't have those procedures or um, classroom management already within the classroom and or that relationship built then I would I would do that first and then introduce mobile devices. Um, and that can be a way that you can kind of award students as well. It can be, hey, okay, so once we learn how to, you know, um, keep um, attention or we can follow the classroom procedures, like when to, you know, gather around, all eyes on me, different procedures like that guess what, we're going to have a mobile Monday or we're going to have a Friday when we get to use our, our mobile devices or we get to, you know, make a video or whatever the task is. And that way students, um, can, it can be like a build up and it, the students really enjoy this a lot. So one thing that really keeps students on task is to time tasks. If your students do have access to Snapchat, all of these, they will go off task. But if you time things, if and I mean time everything, 
um, even the transitions as well, if students see a clock, and I think that like an eight timer or, um, you know, a timer, there's um, a website called classroomscreen.com, and I will tweet it, um, but it has a timer, all of these great things for classroom management, um, if you can project that in your classroom. If not, an egg timer or kitchen timer that students can see and hear really helps as well. And I usually try to time task no more than five minutes. Um, and that's, and, and it's everything. So, um, okay, we're going to see this picture. You're going to have five minutes to write um, you know, a response in the notes, notes section, or you're going to have five minutes to come up with a text conversation between you and your partner, or you're going to have, you know, two minutes to, you, you see this, um, there's this question posted, and you're going to have two minutes to share with a partner, and then we're going to share as a group. And so usually I try to make it two to five minutes, and that way they're so busy and focused on the task and trying to complete the task within that time that they don't have time time to go to the others and so that really helps pairing or grouping students and that's this is actually what it looks like in my classroom these are students that I was teaching in Croatia and that's what it looks like some of them are with a mobile device um, while somebody else is um, you know writing down the recorder giving them different types of roles and responsibilities I use paper still in the classroom because that's really important still just because we use a mobile device doesn't mean that students don't need to know how to um, you know write with paper or you know practice taking notes and doing both really does in enhance um, the mind it, it really does improve um, the way that they're going to work um, outside the classroom as well. And so doing both, um, if you can teach them how to do both, one is gonna be um, the deliverer, one is gonna be the one, oh, so there's a note taker or a reporter, a reporter is the one that gets up and shares really quickly in like a minute or less what the group um, ideas were. As somebody else um, is going to be maybe taking pictures, it's going to be uh, the one using the device to do different things as well. Um, and then some of them, if you're doing like a video, maybe like the anchor or the person that's the face, you know, that wants to be the actor. So you can also tap into their different skill sets when you're grouping students as well. Um, set up a mobile device area and this is really really important um, so that way you can make sure it's very tempting and a lot of our students um, especially teens and older students um, even our adult students I taught adults in Germany and I found a lot of them were addicted to their mobile device as well they could not uh, you know um, I had to keep going through the expectation of uh, please, uh, you know, if it's a, an emergency or, or a phone call, then, um, you know, step out of the classroom because some would just answer in the middle of class. And so it's really important that there is a storage area and there's a place where students, after they use it, you know, they get it out for the learning and the task and then they put it up when you're finished with the task and this will keep them from constantly checking um and you can you can establish if you know um you could say hey if if you tell me ahead of time and there is an emergency um then okay we'll make that exception you can carry it around but really the expectation is you leave it here and um you have to notify me ahead of time and this really just um keeps that you know, lets them know it's a privilege. Um, it, it's kind of a physical a way of indicating it's a privilege to be able to use this in the classroom and we don't have to use it if, you know, everyone's not going to be able to comply. Um, outline clear expectations and consequences. One of the clear expectations, um, you know, we stay on task, we stay focused. Whenever I give the signal, all eyes on me, um, you know, and sometimes they have a chant that they say back or, you know, some teachers say like, ready, set, um, and they say, go, or, 
uh, you know, something where it gets them back to focusing on you. Um, you really do need that. Um, if, and, and then for them to do that right away, you know, practice a few times. Um, and then when they know all of that um, and know the expectations, okay, well, we're not going to have our mobile Monday. Um, if, if too many of us, more than five students are not able to, or you're going to have to sit out and just do the writing portion. Um, have, you know, like a writing um you know i have a little reflection table and students go and they still do like um and they do uh the same activity but written um you know they may have it where it's like a blank um you know cell phone template and then they write like a text message so they're still focusing on the task but they realize I and mean, they're still learning and participating in learning but that they also realize um they don't get to have the device for the learning if they're not able to um follow the procedures so let's go ahead and begin with some activities so that way you can walk away with uh, some activities. You can always find um, a lot of these ideas if you go to shellyterrell.com slash move it and that's at the bottom of the slides and at Shelly Terrell um, on Twitter. I'm also Shelly Terrell on Facebook. If you want to connect that way, you'll find my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Shelly Terrell. And so a lot of things, if you um, Google Shelly Terrell, you can find me on pretty much any um, social network, um, then I can um, help you um, that way too if you have any more questions or anything other than the ones we get to. Um, so when you have get to know you activities, these are very, very short activities. Um, they're a lot like this where students are walking around um, and it, it looks just like that except with mobile devices and um, some paper as well less than five minutes they're just trying to gather information and make connections and when I mean less than five minutes I mean you can extend the activity but it's less than five minutes with a partner so the idea is once they've had their five minutes or less they move on to somebody else and that way you have that same conversation and it keeps going and they're able to make more conversations and they're able to hear more different accents or more different types of um you know language coming out because it's emergent language they're going to hear from a different partner different responses and so a lot of the icebreakers or get to know you that you're um, used to like if you do a lot of find someone who um, the difference is that it's on a mobile device um, and they can show a picture with it so um, here's one that I came up with in one of my books called show Intel with the cell and what students do is that they go and they share an image with a peer um, any image they're comfortable with and that they've taken and you can kind of assign this as homework as well it, so for the next class we need you to you know have a picture you took that's meaningful to you in some way um, and then share the story behind it you know what what does all of this mean oh well these are my favorite items or these are pictures ab about me this is what you know um, these are things a collage or a visual you know as they can share the little narrative oh I took this while I was visiting um, this park or um, I was helping my 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 sister and learn how to ride a bike for the first time and so I've used this activity in groups of even 800 students at one time and it worked really really well um, everyone got to share it was very simple they already had the the image on their device and so it was easy for them to um, be able to talk and you don't need an internet connection for that once they take the image on the device and they can share it. You can even do this with um, digital camera. If they do not have um, access to a device, another idea that they've had too is where a lot of times I'll get students to bring their own devices or any kind of device. And I, I really do let them know that if you have a flip camera, if you have a digital camera. And sometimes I get um, communities to just um, uh, to donate a lot of the, you know, the cameras that they have that they no longer use because once, you know, they got a mobile device, um, then they were able to um, stop using their, their mm -hmm. digital camera. And so that's a way that you can also get um, more devices. Um, but often if they don't have a device, um, what we do is, you know, we still take that one device for learning, you know, at, at least when you're in a group, if there's like four, if each one, if each group has a device, then 
there's still a lot of learning that can be done with that. And so when we do this particular activity as an icebreaker and get to know your group members, then they can use um, personal objects. They can use like a earring or they can use a, a nice eraser or a pen or something they have in their backpacks or their bags or on them and then their t-shirt or something and let you know the story behind that. And so what I try to do is instead of saying, okay, not everyone has, you know, a smartphone or not everyone has a cell phone or something um, that we cannot have mobile learning. What I try to do is say, okay, we can share the device, still do really great learning and, um, you know, respect that each of us um, is not always going to have the same, um, you know, it, it, that we can share with each other and learn together with our sharing. Um, and that way we focus on the advantage of using that. So um, a follow up activity. So as a teacher, um, the way that you add, it's up to you for each of these to decide which vocabulary, which um, objective you want to accomplish, which of the four, uh, the four skills you want to focus on. And so when you're writing the lesson plan, you'll write that, you'll you'll decide. Um, so I always think of follow-up activities that use those um, in mind. And here's an example. Use the five senses and adjectives to describe the image. And you see a very young girl here. Well, that's because um, I have a little daughter as well. So <laughs> you hear something in the background, it's my She's 21 months, so she, she'll be waking up around this time, but hopefully, um, you know, she, she'll be fine with her daddy. <laughs> um, but I thought I would throw that in there. So here's one where it's the five senses, and that was, you know, we're doing descriptive writing. And so that was the objective, to get them to learn how to use adjectives to describe. And so that was part of, um, you know, and, and this could be turned into a conversation if I want to focus on speaking skills or if I want it in writing, then they could also do that. One of the easiest ways to use a mobile device that kids and, and many teachers are very familiar with, um, of course, is uh, our photo challenges, you know, so you can take a lot of different photos. Um, and so one of them that they've come up with is instead of playing, if you've ever played the game, and it's a popular game in different countries, um, but it's called I Spy. Usually you do this in the classroom as a, as a language learning, usually with young learners, but this can work with, um, I've used this with teens and adults as well. And so um, I Spy is usually where uh, children or, or the students get into pairs. And what they do is um, one says, look, I spy something red and it's, it's, um, it's, it's circle or it's, um, it, it's something we use, I spy something we use to write with or, you know, and they give clues like that and the other partner guesses what they spy. So with a mobile device, it's a little bit different. What they do instead is they just go, they take the picture and um, it, it could be what you're teaching. So first I'll show them a slide of different shapes. Okay, so I spy shapes. Um, and then there can be like a little math lesson or something where, okay, what is this? We learn about the square. We learn about the difference between circle and a spear, a square and a rectangle and, you know, um, a triangle or pyramid, all of those. And then, so what we do is um, after the students, I feel they're comfortable with that, then they're going to get the instruction to take a picture of, um, of an example of a shape. Okay, and so they're given, uh, you know, two minutes to go around the classroom or around them and be able to take that picture. And they have to come back and they can't tell anyone um, what the picture is. So they show their peers the object that they took and the peer has to guess what that object is. In this case, it's a soccer ball. So it's, it's pretty easy because they have the soccer ball. Um, and then um, they have to guess the shape. So in this one, they might say circle. And the other student uh, might say, no, actually, this is a spear because it's, you know, and they can say, but it does have circles within it as well. And so it leads to those conversations. I've actually had those, the reason I use this example is because those are the conversations I've had students 
news. Um, in the other case, it was actually bubble. Uh, somebody took a picture of them blowing a big bubble, and um, then they showed it to a peer, and the peer said circle, and and the other student corrected that peer and said no, it's a sphere. So I knew that the learning had happened, and which was really really cool. I I really enjoyed that example, and so <laughs> that's ways to do it. If you don't have a um, a lot of devices, you can have if students have access to the internet at home or device at home then what you can have them do is to um, take that picture at home and then have a place where they can upload that picture um, and the, sometimes um, teachers have Edmodo sometimes teachers have a um, you know that they use with classrooms they use Google Classroom they might use WhatsApp they might use so somewhere that you can collect those photos um, it, and that will really help you with a lot of activities if you don't have access to devices, a bunch of devices in the classroom. Photo challenge example, another one that students really love is go on a selfie adventure and that they can do this at home as well. Um, so these are ways that you're really encouraging them to be able to take that. If they're going to be using mobile devices outside the classroom anyway, um, then a lot of them don't see this as homework. They see it as, you know, just a way to um, use the device and share with their friends when they get back and they love doing that so I make this where it's not it's it's you know they're extra activities and so it's not that everyone is required because not everyone um, has access or not everyone wants to but when they see you know how excited and they get to be part of the examples in the classroom um, then that makes for a lot of enjoyable conversation and then more and more students um, will want to do this kind of homework and so uh, I want to encourage you, you know, the first few times, and I want you to know that uh, sometimes you get some really great, um, you know, uh, everything goes well and everything is just so exciting and you're so excited when you use mobile devices the first time. But once again, the more you keep at it, the more it's going to get. So it's, um, so if it doesn't necessarily only like two or three share or something like that, don't feel discouraged by that because you're still bringing in your students. Um, they still get to be part of um, the learning. They get to be part of uh, giving some of the the examples and the materials. They get to develop some of those learning materials and that's really awesome because that's authentic learning and that's learning that uh, real world learning and their peers get to learn from there. And that's really powerful. So um, the selfie adventure is basically they're creating a slideshow. They can do it on a PowerPoint if they want. Or I have, um, if you go to shellytotal.com slash move it, I have free templates and everything like that, a free PowerPoint template they, on slideshare too that they can download and they can use. And it gives them these these little um, these little categories a hobby. So it's them taking a selfie with a hobby. Me, you know, I'm I have my examples with a guitar. Um, they have a selfie with you know a favorite pet. And in fact, Roscoe is next to me laying down. Um, so he's actually here next to me. This is what I look like, by the way. This is me. Um, at different points. If it's um, a child and, you know, we do have to protect those 13 and younger, um, then you can have them do a selfie with a favorite toy or stuff animal. So I have a bunch of them with a kitty and a robot where they actually go and they took selfies while I was during uh, my trip to Croatia. So that way the students, when I came back, could, you know, learn the story and the customs and things like that. And so, a favorite book, a favorite place, um, a favorite color, a new student they met, a group, a group selfie, which is called an USSE, so it has different challenges like that. So just thinking of those ideas, think of all the photo challenges you could give your students. Um, things like, you know, if they're doing restaurant vocabulary, maybe take a picture of food that they can include in a menu. Um, or maybe they can, you know, create an Instagram where, or, um, you know, where they, they, they um, go to different restaurants and they take pictures of the food and kind of give a commentary on it. I mean, so there's a lot of different ways that you can use photo challenges to, depending on what you want to teach, um, uh, depending, you know, what is the vocabulary, but it's a great way to build vocabulary and for students to remember it. And it's a great way for you to also have some examples that aren't from the book necessarily, but real world examples. Um, or what you can do is you can also think about, you know, if you do use a textbook 
And um, what you can do is you can take the learning objectives from that or the vocabulary, and that can always be their constant homework that they always have to take up, you know, photos of the vocabulary, find examples of that in the real world, um, you know, around them every day. Um, so that way, that's authentic learning as well. So you can be building images for that. Or it could be where they take a picture, a really cool picture that shows something, you know, a person or you know, a place, their favorite place. And what they can do is create a photo writing prompt that could be, or even a discussion prompt that, or that could be, they show it to another um, peer. And then that photo, they, the, the peer has to come up with a poem or a haiku or, uh, or they have to come up with, um, you know, a news headline or a way, a caption where they're, they're going to pretend that's the photo that's in the front page and, and what's the news story behind it. So there's a lot of way that your student photos can become part of um, the learning in the classroom. Video students. So I've had a lot of teachers um, let me know that they've had, you know, very unmotivated students, um, teenagers, especially how to get them excited. And this is what I always let them know. If you have a video project, more than likely your students are going to really, really um, in, in, enjoy that as well. Um, and so it's really, really important important that you know with um, video tasks and, and projects it's you you can tell um a lot of the students really do um enjoy it they they find it um um motivating uh, as well and so i think that that's that's really important as well um so when we are talking about uh, using video in the classroom um there's one example that um, I think is is really great for that I use a lot with my students, and here's actually one from um, a student recently. Um, and so what the students do is they actually come up with an invention, and then the students um, and usually what I do is give them an object, like for example, um, it has to be like a pen or a pencil or an eraser. Each group or pair, if you decide to do it in pairs and groups or they can do it individually. In this case, um, this uh, gentleman did it in individually. And what they have to do is they have to improve that invention, somehow enhance it. And it can, it can, it can be something that's not already invented. Um, it, their imagination is, is endless. They can, I don't give them any um, uh, parameters. So I think it, it when we do that, um, then students come up with really great ideas. Um, here, this one actually writes their own assignments. Um, they don't have to put any mental effort is what he says. Um, and then so afterwards, um, they they plan out the commercial and then they have to produce a commercial for it. It has to be um, one minute or less. And so in my classroom, a lot of times, because you run into issues if you have very long videos, it's very hard, um, especially if you decide to collect them. Um, if you have low internet access, the bigger your, um, the more time it takes, then um, the larger the file and it will take forever to collect those videos, even if students do it outside the classroom, even if they do it through Bluetooth, even if they have a connector. So the best thing to do is to really have um, them produce um, videos that are a minute or less. And, and nowadays, um, there's so many that you can do that are a minute or less, even in groups. And that really does keep them focused with the task because the longer the video, then you have to go into editing. It becomes a really big project that takes several, several classes. And so it's much easier to just do it this way. Um, this is what it looks like. So before they actually get to the point of having this little video, or it could be a slide presentation, um, it's up to you. But um, what students can do is they have to storyboard it first. And this is what a storyboard looks like. A storyboard, is, and I have free ones that you can download as well um, at the website. But what students do is that they are able to uh, plan each frame. This is going to be the first frame. This is going to be the second, the third. They can draw in it, um, or they can add their own pictures. Um, they put a description. They put the dialogue 
if they have an audio in the background that they want to use, they can do that. Um, and then they can put effects, you know, something disappears, something zooms in. So this was a really good one from one of my uh, students in China. And so uh, this is really important, the storyboard aspect, um, or to get students to incorporate a writing or a graphic organizer or something when they're planning their projects. First of all, it's going to make the project much, much better because they planned it. Um, they put their ideas down and they organized it. Um, and so it's going to make that faster to be able to produce that video instead of them standing around and deciding, okay, let's do this. No, instead, they've already made the decisions on paper. And the other part is it improves um, you're incorporating other skills. So instead of just the speaking and listening, that's part of the video production. It's also them um, doing some reading and writing as well. And this is very light writing. You can tell, um, you know, there's not a lot of writing here. So um, students are able um, at different levels. If you work with mixed levels, then that's a way to really get them um, to do that. Um, what other video products can help your students? So news broadcasts, um, I had my students on my blog, you'll find their trailers on how to do something, how to put on makeup, how to quickly make a sandwich, how to tie a shoe, how to, I mean, there's just different do-it-yourself uh, types of videos. And that's also part of their culture. They watch those all the time. Um, or book trailer, so making a little movie um, or a little movie preview or something about a book or just introducing a book you know what is they can even do reviews um you know this is what i really enjoyed about this book this is why you should read it some audio tasks and projects um a lot of times we have that audio recording feature and a lot of us um don't realize, you know, we don't take advantage of that. I remember one of the first ways I used mobile learning was about 10 years ago when I started recording my students in class, um, our conversations, so they could go back and we would just play it afterwards in the class um, when I was doing one-to-one. -one. And then the student would have to go back and say, hey, I noticed this mistake that I made in this conversation. This is how I should have I should have said it. And so that was just one of the ways as we would play back the conversation we just had, they had to identify their mistakes, listen, identify, we'd write them, they'd write them down and then they would fix them. They would say, okay, this is, I didn't point it out at the beginning either. Um, I let them see if they can kind of take that conversation and then um, edit it from there. So one example is also a chain story. This is a whole class example. You only need one device for this. And so um, you basically pass around. At first, the students are sitting in a circle. Um, the first student receives the mobile device um, and records his her beginning of the story. You could be the first student. So you could be the first one and say, once upon a time. And then you give the device to the next person and that um, and instruct that student, okay, you have to, um, and remember, you re press record, you have to press the record and say, and before I give the instructions, I'm going to start a story, I'm going to say once upon a time, there was a pug, and then you instruct your students, okay, each of you is going to fill out, you know, the story, make sure it makes sense, you know, give the instructions or objectives, you know, make sure it makes sense, Make sure that, you know, you um, follow up on what you have to listen carefully to what was previously said, because you're going to have to follow up um, with a different part of the story that builds off of your previous, um, you know, the previous student and so forth and so forth. And at the end, they have, you know, this whole entire story recorded. And then you can, you know, follow this up by having them add pictures or drawings or, you know, correcting the language in that story. Somebody, you know, writes it down. They can all write it down, um, you know, add more to their part of the story. Well, how they would they enhance that part of the story now? What are adjectives that they could add into that? You know, what are more powerful ways of saying that part that they recorded? And so there's a lot of follow-up activities you could do with that. What other audio projects? Um, I think about, you know, tons of other ways that you could use audio recordings in your classroom. Or even, it's not necessarily that you have to have them 
produce or create or do something, they can also um, just listen to or have a podcast um, that you I listen to tons of podcasts and um, I, I find certain parts of them really great for students to listen to. And I think, hey, that would make a really good, um, that would make a really good lesson. And so um, and then I'll just play that and that's the listening in the classroom. And then uh, what I like about the podcast, you know, just playing a certain portion, making that a listening is that's authentic. Um, and a lot of the podcasts versus some of the, the listening materials you often get um, where the conversations don't sound real. But um, so I, I do like doing that. Uh, or I might, you know, do a recording. I might record and then make that the listening for the day. Um, um, you can create a radio jingle. So that's basically a commercial, but one that you would hear on the radio. And so that can be much simpler than, um, especially if your students are shy to come on camera, then um, audio recording is really great. And they can do sound effects. You know, my students love to tap on the table or bring in bells. And so it's really, really cool. Um, creating, um, and then here, so a previous question did ask about um, some apps. Um, and so I, because this is all offline, this is, um, I don't have a lot of apps that I'm mentioning here, but what you can do is um, you can also have where students are able to, um, um, you know, you can look through my my list of recommended apps. I have tons of them for many different things, how to create comics, everything like that. Or you can always ask me um, on social media and then I can give you ideas. But this effect, um, I really like because if you have, if you only have one smartphone, this novel effect is so amazing. Um, and it's free. I only recommend free apps um, because, or if they have a free version because, and usually I try to get it in multiple, just not, I know the majority of uh, people have um, Androids, and at least that's been my um, experience. So I try to do multiple um, devices. But in this one, if you do have an iOS, this one's really cool. So what it is, it's sound effects for a story. When you're reading the story, then this app listens, and then with popular classics, and what it'll do is it'll add like a time. It'll add it when it hears that particular line read then it'll add something like rain or it'll add like music or, and it's so cool. It really animates story time. Um, and then what I like to do is get students to read that portion because then it, it encourages them to want to read aloud because they want to hear the effect come out. And so it's, it's just a very cool app. Um, even if you just try it personally. Um, and so, and there's a lot of device um, ideas shared. And before we go on to um, some other, um, you know, uh, and to some other questions, what I'd like to do is kind of read some of the questions that did come about um, and kind of talk about where they were addressed, some of them. So we did just show a lot of examples. Um, and, and I know that was, hopefully you saw plenty of examples here and you can find plenty on my blog or um, I have a lot of different materials um, also on my website um, and also um, a lot of uh, handouts, templates and free to use that you can download that I've just created throughout my time teaching. And um, hopefully we've seen how we can um, focus, um, you know, focus and do the classroom management aspects. Um, when okay so here's a question about what aspects should teachers consider when using mobile language learning activities with early beginners so some act um so things you should consider when you're doing this it's really important to keep your objectives very simple um i like to use i can statements i can have a conversation with a peer i can talk to a peer um about my day i can share with a peer um, my favorite foods. I can share with a peer my favorite food, um, a pet, or three facts about me. So something very simple that students can do. Um, it's very important that your instructions are very clear. A lot of times I like to um, put um, instructions in just three steps and then put little visuals to show them. 
it's very good, uh, important that you demonstrate everything that you're doing um, and, and model it. Um, it's very important that you have a limited type of vocabulary um, in there, you know, um, you don't have the vocabulary written somewhere, whether it's a little handout that you give to them or whether it's on the board and you review it ahead of time. This is what we're going to focus on. This is the grammar we're going to focus on. And so all of that you do already with your teaching, the mobile device is just an added way to supplement, to give them uh, something physical where they could take that learning outside the classroom and choose to learn more with it. So when you're uh, training at a workplace, um, mobile devices are very, very, uh, in Germany, I did this a lot more. So one of the things that's really important uh, when you are work at a workplace is uh, security. So there's a lot of, um, and so it's, it's important to go over that in your procedures and your expectations and norms. Whatever is recorded, um, you know, only record things that are not company secrets or a company, you know, you don't want them talking about the company or anything that happens within the company. There's a difference between having a conversation um, and that could be, you know, a phone conversation and making that very general when you, um, you know, have a client or something like that. And us not using the company's name, us not, you know, sharing anything that, you know, we wouldn't want to take outside of the classroom, especially if you're recording. So those are things to look out for in a workplace type of situation. Um, and then, you know, try to, so I don't try to reinvent the wheel. What, do, what I mean by that is I take whatever kind of curriculum, what kind of objectives, what kind of textbook, and I incorporate the mobile device to be part of that. And so um, I, I try to use whatever language is within the book. And that keeps it very general as well. That makes it to where you won't necessarily have where, you know, all the students are, are going to be doing that. Hello. Okay. And so um, those are some of the, the questions I wanted to address. If we have some more questions, I can take some of those and then address the others later. Shelly, one came up about um, what do you do when mobile devices or mobile phones are not allowed in the institution? Okay, so that's a really good question. I've gotten that before. And so that's where that, that other part is important, having a WhatsApp account or, um, you know, a place, not necessarily WhatsApp. I actually um, like using something like Linoid, Padlet, or um, Google Classroom, something where um, you can have a virtual place, like a virtual group. And then outside of the classroom, you can always share. And then the students just upload their examples or the tasks. If they made a little video at home, if they took pictures, they can you can use that as a place to collect it and then you can have conversations everything outside the classroom or they can you know they can have a chat and you can put the topic of the chat today we're you know the chat is about pretend you're at a restaurant um what are you going to say when um how do you how do you what do you say when your food is is not right or it's cooked you know add some questions or something and you can have that conversation going outside the classroom. Um, but the other part is it's a way to collect, you know, if they have pictures to contribute and then use them in the classroom. And that's what I would recommend. Um, that way the mobile's not in the classroom, but you're still able to collect. Now, one of the um, questions that was asked uh, was about privacy issues with young children. And so um, just as long as we keep it within the classroom, we're not using their photos to blog or, you know, anything like that, you, we have to get those permissions from the students, um, then that's important as well. Um, any other questions? It, um, there were some deeper questions that I can also address. Um, so one of the, the questions um, that was asked was, um, so there was a really, really deep question. There's two deep questions. Um, I have actually recently wrote, um, 
a report and I also wrote a book and it, and, and it did talk about MA. So somebody asked about uh, MA, mobile assisted language learning. Um, and that is the pod, the pedagogy and um, that's also the, the framework that is, is part of all of this. Um, and I believe it was Graham, uh, I forgot his last name, who really wrote an incredible article about it. Um, I'll try to tweet that or something. It was a really great article if you want to learn more about that pedagogy. Um, but I, I think, yeah, those are really, really, this was more of some ideas. Um, so I, I think, yes, if you have the ability to use things like augmented reality or, um, you know, do more, um, and those are more advanced. So once you're very comfortable, with taking pictures or videos incorporating that, then I, I think, yes, you can try different exciting things like that. Like, for example, with augmented reality, because that's what the question asks about too, is um, you can have students use that as a way of a writing prompt. Or if they visit, let's say that they put on Google glasses, they go on a Google expedition and they see the Smithsonian Museum. Well, then some of the tasks could be, okay, describe your favorite exhibit or describe your favorite art. Um, come write the brochure, right? You know, each of us is going to come up with a class brochure where we talk about the different parts in, in that particular museum that we saw. And even, or, and each of us, you know, becomes responsible or create a, a an activity that goes along with that, um, what you explore, you know, and teach your, your classmates, you know, your classmate, you're going to, with a small group, they're going to have to do that activity. So those are different ideas if you do use advanced, if you are able to use advanced things like that. Um, so um, any other questions and or I can address some previous questions as well. There are some questions here also about um, for older instructors, how, how tech friendly does the instructor need to be? Once again, um, your students are gonna learn a lot. I mean, they're starting at, I have students that are as young as six and five that are using a mobile device. And one of the conversations we had this past week was how many, cause I'm trying to build their confidence. A lot of my students break down if they can't do something on the computer. So I have to build their confidence as well. A lot of my elementary students. And you think, wow, they know everything, but they don't. They don't know how to learn with a mobile device. You know the learning, you know pedagogy, you know what really helps with that. So um, what I, I like to do is to have them um, you know, have them teach you because that's the best way that they learn too. And so you can say, okay, so we're going to do something you're comfortable with taking pictures. You know, a lot of us can start with that. There's tons of activities with taking pictures, whether it's okay, here's um, a picture I took, do a little writing or in pairs, you know, describe this picture to each other, list five adjectives to each other. So that's something very simple you can do. Um, a lot of, you know, even older instructors. If you don't know how to take a picture, then have someone teach you ahead of time so that way you can take a good picture. And then, and then with your students, you know, walk through that, say, okay, um, if you were going to take this picture, how would you take this picture? You know, how would you make sure it's focused? You know, and that can be a lesson too. So if you're an older learner, then it's good to learn the mobile device together. And they may teach you something when you're doing something like, how do we use the device? How do we take a better picture? You know, how do we keep it focused? How do we um, make a video that's in slow motion? You know, if we, we go together through that, then that's ways for us to build our skills. Um, but no, you don't have to know everything about it. You just have to be comfortable about what you're teaching with the mobile device. And so, um, and then I'll address one more question. And then if there's no more, then um, I'll go ahead and uh, sign, um, let you all go on your day. Um, and here are the different ways that you can reach me. These are my two wonderful children, Hoska the Pug who has his own Facebook page. See, he's very mobile friendly as well. And Savannah, who um, I reluctantly, um, I do believe with 
young learners, I try not to get my daughter. She's going to be two, and I think it's okay to introduce some things, but I really want to keep her away, especially from uh, some of the gaming and stuff, because I do see the impact of that with young children. Um, and, and I think games are great, but there's a lot of social games, and in those social games, there's a lot of bullying. So um, I would be really wary of those, especially the ones like Fortnite, Roblox, those kind of things. Um, I try to really get, I have to do a lot of um, cyberbullying, friendship, kindness kind of things with my students because of, you know, their experience in those social games. Um, so here's the last question that I, I want to address. I am curious about how others um, see these kind of, uh, assess these kinds of projects. Um, and just want to be aware of Prensky, who states, be careful not to praise work or evaluate too highly just because it uses technology. And that's true. You know, we don't want to, um, it's, it is important to praise work. Um, and I wouldn't discourage you, I mean, because that's just one line. Um, and it's taken out of a very, very large amount of learning. Um, but it is important that we, that's why I think it's very important that we incorporate paper, pencil, um, we do different types of device, even, um, you know, cell phones, we can show that there's benefit with that, that you don't always have to have a smartphone. And just to focus on how you can have continuous learning and the, when you do use a device, you can use that um, during your free time to continue that learning. Um, but yes, definitely, I wouldn't say, you know, um, you know, conversations of how important it is to learn with technology, but also the importance of, you know, it's it's important to brainstorm and use that um, the paper to um, pen and paper because we still think with that a lot. And that a majority of the world, that's what they, their tools are. They still have access to that. So definitely, I think we never want to make it seem like um, the technology um, is so important that it overrides the reality of our real world classroom situations. Um, so that's a good point to bring up. And I'll kind of end in that note, unless there are any more questions. And thank you all so much for being here. If you have any more questions, you can reach me at these different places. And um, or if you have an idea and you want an app um, to go with it, I know thousands of free apps. Um, you can just let me know the kind of device you have and I can help you with that. Okay, with that, we're going to close our program for today. And today's uh, talk was mobile devices and hands-on le language learning. Thank you so much, Shelley. And I think for all the people out there and the people who will get this recording, I think remember that um, there are lots of applications. I think with all the different ages, I teach primarily university and business people. So I think that it gives us all ideas, even in terms of our own conferences and how we can incorporate the technology that's there today. So thank you very much. Make sure that you, uh, you note that you will receive a recording. And if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me to get Shelly's contact if you weren't able to get it. And once again, thank you again, Shelly. And if you can just disconnect, um, that will be helpful. Thank you.